Hey, in this tutorial we are going to be making this animation here. You can put any name, any word, anything inside here. Basically it's a really simple looking thing and it is really simple but it does look good. Um, so in order to get a better result I would say that you use more samples than I did but I just wanted a quick preview so I could show you. Um, basically you could use this for anything with any color. So let's get started. Basically what we want to do is, well, I'm going to do is, I'm going to enable my screencast keys, although we won't really need them, I think. Um, down here you can see everything I'm pressing, so that should be fine. Well, we're going to press Shift A, then load in the plane, I'm just going to make it fairly big, and that's half the way done. Uh, trust me, it's really that simple. And now we're going to add in the text, so let's get that out of the way. We're going to center it on both axes, so we're going to press on the text to select it, uh, go to the text icon, so the little A, uh, then we have this paragraph, so we click on that, and now where it says horizontal, we click center, and when, where it says vertical, press on center. And that is really most of the work done. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to uh, font, where we are going to choose font. Um, Basically, just choose them, choose one that you like. Um, I'm liking this one over here. I think it comes with Windows pre-installed, so you should have that uh, too. I'm going to write in, I don't know, Philip. That's my name. So now I'm going to press number pad seven, then Control Alt and Zero to snap my camera to uh, the view I am. I'm currently in, so that's top auto graphic. I'm going to make this as big as I want it to be, so about this size over here should be fine. Now we're going to go to geometry under the text. Uh, I'm going to bevel it by, I don't know, 0 0.003. Yep, that gives me a good, a good result. Then I'm going to extrude it by 0.4. That should be fine maybe 0.5 who gives a damn so what we're going to do now is just bring it down like this until you can't see it from the top like so uh, that should be fine and then I'm going to press I location now I'm going to trim this down to 48 frames that is 2 seconds on uh, 24 frames of second so when we're going under the uh, under the settings you can see it's 24 FPS if you wanted to make a 30 FPS animation then you would need 60 uh, frames to get 2 seconds but I think 24 frames per second is just fine for an animation so yeah I'm not gonna bother and render more frames than I need so I'm going to frame 48 bring it up quite a bit like so I'm going to press I and location well you're basically done the animation is the animation is done you have two second clip of your name or anything else rising up uh, basically what we're going to do now is going to the last frame set the world uh, illumination to zero so like so set this to cycle it does work in Eevee but it gives you weird edges around uh, around the shadows so I'm not recommending that, so I'm going to use cycles since that gives us the best results. I'm going to import an area light, so bring that up quite a bit, like so. Now I'm going to move it way over here, maybe make this a bit smaller until it fits nicely, like so. So we don't have such a big fall off in our plane. Uh, so yeah, bring that way back here. We want that distance to get even illumination uh, on our plane. And now, while being in the front orthographic mode with number pad one, I'm going to rotate this by pressing R. Bring it to the or origin point, roughly. Doesn't have to be exact. Now number pad three, and basically do the same on the z-axis until it's going through the center. Now when we go here we can further adjust this like so 
and it's not going in the right direction, so like this. And now it's fine. Now if we go to rendered view, we basically don't see anything because the light is not nearly strong enough. So let's make it a thousand. Not really good enough. Ten thousand. Not really good enough. Let's try fifty thousand. Not really good enough. Let's try seventy thousand. Maybe perhaps a hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand is looking good. We can size this up by four times to get some soft shadows down the edge here. Um, we could even make it 40 times bigger to get some really soft shadows. So you'll have to adjust that to your liking. Make it bigger to get softer shadows, make it smaller to get harsh shadows. Um, I'm gonna make one that has really soft shadows right now. So now what we want to do is select the plane, go to shading, pressing 0 to get back to the camera. Now I'm going to give this the basic material. What I did, I used um, a value of 1, hue of 0.5, saturation of 0.5, and there you go. There you have that same result as I showed you. Just give the text the same material and we're good to go. I didn't play with the roughness, I didn't play with anything else. Um, I just basically did that. I'm not going to render the whole animation again because it's already 6.30 and I wanna uh, put this episode out in like uh, 30 minutes so yeah I'm just going to give this a quick render with uh, like a thousand samples before I used like uh, 400 so this should be fine. Uh, I used the noising to uh, get a cleaner result and then put some of the noise back in to make it more natural but uh, basically use a high sample count if you want it to be a good quality and then use the noising and just bring some of the noise back and you should be good to go. So see you after the render. So here we go this is the finished result and basically I've used depth of sampling so with the basic settings uh, before you render, enable denoising data and basically connect it up like this. So noisy image into the image, denoising normal into the normal, denoising albedo into the albedo. Uh, basically plug that into the mix node right here on the top input, then the image or the noisy image doesn't matter, into the image down there and then play with the factor until you get something that you like. Basically you want the image to be a little bit noisy, so like this. Uh, and less bludgy because uh, that's what the denoising node does in this case. So yeah, render it out with many samples so you don't get the noisy or pretty much only bludgy image. Then bring some of the noise back with that method. I hope you all liked it, I hope you learned something and I hope you can put this to good use and we will see each other in the next episode when I do something else. See ya, bye!